<laughs> I'm going to sing a, a song that I wrote to comfort myself in times of financial disaster, which I see a lot of being a full-time musician. It's not, it's a wonderful way to make a living, but it's not the easiest way to make a living. And, and my husband is at home minding our two children um, while I'm away, so I'm very grateful to him for that. And he's been a student for the last few years, and he's just graduated from art college with a BA in drawing. So he's um, on his way to becoming a full-time artist, which kind of makes being a full-time musician look like a sensible career proposition. <laughs> so this is The Sun Goes On Rising. I hear the wolf at the door I've seen his face before He's hungry and I'm tired Can't keep him out much more And through the chink in the blind I watch him trying to place my accent 
and wondering about the fact that I live in England. Um, I was born in Spain, which is where my father was from. I grew up in America, in Chicago, which is where my mother was from. My mother and stepfather then moved to England, which is where my stepfather is from. I, meanwhile, moved to Ireland, which is where my husband is from and where my children were born. And then after living in Ireland for 13 years, moved eight years ago to Cornwall in the far southwest of England. So there you have it. You probably just figured that out for yourselves, anybody, hadn't you, just by listening to me? It's obvious really. So um, that song was from my third album, The Plum Tree and the Rose, and uh, I'm going to sing the title track now of my new fourth album, Walking into White, which Dana very kindly mentioned. And before I sing the title track, I'm going to sing a little fragment of a song. When I went into the studio to record the album, I had an a cappella song, and my cousin, Adam Pierce, who was the producer, said, why don't you take that song and split it into three parts? <coughs> and have each part be kind of a little interlude between two other uh, tracks. And I thought that worked really well. And, uh, and so I'm gonna sing one of those little interludes in the place where it goes on the album, which is right before this song. And this title track is one of three songs that I wrote for the album that were all inspired by a series of children's books. So very appropriate to sing in a library. Um, that I was reading aloud to my children over the course of about a year and a half before making the album. And the books are called The Swallows and Amazons. They're very <coughs> English. They didn't really get too popular over here, so I wouldn't be surprised if you hadn't heard of them. They were written in the 1920s and 30s by a guy called Arthur Ransom. And you know, they're of their time, you know, they, but, but they're, they're kind of wonderful. They're all about children having adventures in the great outdoors and situations and the books kept striking me as I was reading them aloud as being wonderful sort of metaphors for life. So in this one, two children get lost in the fog. They're walking across the moor and this big bank of fog rolls down off the mountainside and surrounds them. And they're, they're, they're walking through this thick white mist and they can't see anything in front of them and they can't see anything behind them. And they don't even know if they're still going the right direction. and. Um, well, it struck me as being like life. I, I, I don't know if it's like life for you. <laughs> I kind of hope not, but uh, that's, that's how I feel all the time. So I wrote Walking into White. But first, I'll sing this. The sweetness of the berry doesn't take away the pain of the briar when it stabs you in the hand but the power of your craving for the fruit among the thorns is driving you to risk another chance sweetness and Summer sun and autumn rain. They had long to go that afternoon. The light on the
viewers as being impossible for Sarah to ever perform alive, of course. But we like doing impossible things, don't we, Martin? So I'm told. You love it, really. He does. Tell me every night. Loves it. Loves it. So the way this track came about is I was visiting friends of mine who are composers, mostly for films, and uh, they played me an instrumental piece that they had written. And I really liked it, and I started picking it out on the guitar. And they said, you know, that sounds lovely with you playing it on the guitar. Why don't you, if you felt like writing a vocal melody and some lyrics to go with it, we wouldn't object. So I went off, and I wrote not one, but three vocal melodies and three sets of lyrics, and I put them together as a three-part round. And as if that weren't complicated enough, when I went into the studio to record it, my cousin Adam, the producer, who besides being a wonderful producer, is also a wonderful percussionist, he said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take that 4-4 four, four time tune and song, and we'll put a 5-4 time percussion pattern behind it. And we'll do it with stumps and hand claps. So, here we go. Are you ready, Martin? I am coiled like a spring. It's <laughs> coiled like a spring.
the wonderful Martin Stansbury over there. He makes the magic happen. Well, my son was having trouble sleeping because he was lying awake worrying about a lot of different things. And so I said to him, why don't you try writing down each of your worries on a different piece of paper, and then the worries can be down on the paper, and they don't have to be rattling around in your head anymore. And that actually worked really well for him. He started sleeping again and stopped worrying, but of course I, being his mother, had to look at all the bits of paper and find out what he was worried about. And one of the things that he was worried about was the underground volcano underneath Yellowstone National Park. He was worried that that was going to erupt and set off a chain reaction of earthquakes and volcanoes going right around the globe, thereby triggering the apocalypse. Now, earlier on this tour, I played this song and, and a, a fella came up to me at the merch table at the break and, and introduced himself to me as a geologist. And he said that being a geologist, he could assure me that I could tell Eli that he did not have to worry about Yellowstone, but he said that also being a geologist, there were lots of other things that Eli could worry about if he wanted to, but, but not that. But there you go. I did get a song out of it anyway, and it's called Yellowstone. My son can't sleep, he's 10 years old, he's scared that Yellowstone will blow And when it does It could set off A mighty chain reaction Volcanoes around the world Exploding Darkened skies And love flowing His mind won't let it go He's ten years old 
to my, my third album now, The Plum Tree and the Rose, and because I, I played a, a song that I wrote for my son there, it's only fair that I should also play one that I wrote for my daughter. My son is 12 now, and so far he's been a very cautious and careful and sensible and reliable child. I'm sure that may all be about to change, but so far, so good. My daughter is the exact opposite. The more She's 10, and, and, and the more dangerous and risky something is, the more determined she is to do that thing, whatever it is. And that's kind of scary for me, and all I can think is, if it's this scary for me now, when she's 10, what's it going to be like in another few years? It's all ahead of me. So I wrote this to try and prepare myself for what lies ahead. It's called Lift You Up and Let You Fly. My pretty little bird, you've got fragile little palms. The beauty in your eyes leaves me terrified. There's so much danger in this world, I'm scared to let you out alone. Scared to let you spread your baby wings and take to flight. But though my belly made you, I can't hold you, I can't cage you, I can't lay my fears to rest, but I can try. Set you free and you 
fly away from me I know you might not come back at all Lift you up and let you Sweet bird, I love you so Can't bear to let you go Little girl of mine, it's hard But I will try To let you Sorry? And the bridge and the uh, and the melody? Yeah. God, that's unusual. Because <laughs> uh, most, uh, you know, most songwriters have a lyricist. Yeah, I mean, I do co-write, although I tend to be the lyricist when I co-write. Um, but, um, although it's always kind of a collaboration. But, uh, but yeah, no, that one's, that one's all mine. <laughs> I didn't write that with anybody else. Thank you so much. Thanks for the kind words. Well, um, I'm going to play a song that I didn't write now. I was really sad earlier this year to hear of the death of the great Chin Ritchie, and so I thought I might do one of her songs, kind of by way of a tribute. And she was not only a wonderful folklorist and collector of traditional songs on both sides of the Atlantic, but she also wrote some beautiful songs. Um, and this is one of them, and she wrote it using the pseudonym Than Hall, which is a pseudonym that she would use when she was concerned that something she'd written might have been a bit too controversial. And she wasn't worried about getting herself into trouble, but she was worried about getting uh, any members of her family into trouble by association. So um, this one has a chorus. I don't know how, uh, how, how you feel about singing choruses. If you, if you really don't want to, it's okay. I'm not gonna put you under pressure. But if you did feel like singing, preferably in four-part gospel choir style harmony, on this one kind of cries out for harmonies. And so that would be just great. You know, whatever, whatever you're up for would be, would be just wonderful. Um, the words of the chorus are, in the mines, in the mines, in the blue diamond mines, I have worked my life away. In the mines, in the mines, in the blue diamond mines, go fall on your knees and pray. And you'll hear a reference in this song to John L. And that's a reference to John L. Lewis, who is the president of the United Mine, Work Mine Workers Federation of America from 1920 until 1950, and who apparently had very bushy eyebrows. I, I know this because a lady sitting right about where you are in the front row at a, at a concert earlier on this tour, when I mentioned John L. Lewis, she did this. <laughs> and, and I kind of looked at her in puzzlement, and she said, bushy eyebrows. So, hey, learn something new every day.
we got one.
wrote with another singer, speaking of co-writing, um, who I met um, when I moved down to Cornwall. It's in the far southwest of England, and it's pretty remote. So um, I met Zoe because our kids were both going to the same tiny, tiny little school, only about 20 odd kids in the whole school, ranging in age from four on up to 11. And we got to be friends, and it was only after we got to be friends as fellow mums in school that I, that I discovered that she was a bona fide former pop star. She had a great big hit single back in 1991 with a song that she wrote and performed on Top of the Pops and all the TV shows like that. It was called Sunshine on a Rainy Day, and it went to number five in the UK pop chart. Stayed at number five for 16 weeks. It was used on a Volkswagen commercial and has kept her nicely ever since. Just one song, all it takes. I keep writing them, I keep hoping. Doesn't have to be Volkswagen, it could be Preparation H. <laughs> so um, we, we started writing songs together and we decided to make an album and we made it with the help of Martin there. Um, he did such a beautiful job of producing and engineering that album that I decided I had to take him on the road with me and that was what, six years ago, and he's been doing all my touring with me ever since. And the album is called Crow, Coyote, Buffalo, and it got great reviews. We were described by one reviewer as two pagan goddesses channeling the ghost of Jim Morrison via 60s acid folk. <laughs> Make of that what you will. So uh, this is one of those songs that we wrote together for that album. It's the, the title track of the album, and it's called Crow Coyote Buffalo.
much. This one is from my second album, I Won't Go Home Till Morning, and uh, it's one I, I wrote um, after I'd had a series of tragedies in my life, and I don't think people do this so much here, but in England and, I in England and Ireland, if you're, um, if you're uh, walking down the road and you're, you're feeling sad, and therefore, no doubt, looking sad, what'll happen quite often is that a total stranger will come walking the other way towards you and right about as they draw level with you they'll say, cheer up, might never happen and you just want to take them by the collar and shake them and say, well actually it has happened and I'm sad and that should be allowed and so I thought that what I ought to do was write an uplifting song in praise of grief and sadness. So here it is, it's called Only an Emotion. Cheer up, it might never happen to the stranger in the street. Well, it already did, but that's life And loss is nothing new to me And the doctor says I need a little something To get me through this difficult time But I've got a reason for my state of mind It's only an emotion There's no problem it's natural I'm feeling sad That's all Since when did grief become An illness to be cured We don't wear black don't mourn, we don't talk about it, that's for sure. We smile like obedient children, and we swallow the pills prescribed. Because the power of our anguish has us terrified. It's only an emotion, there's no problem here to solve. It's natural. I'm feeling sad, that's all. And today I saw the funny thing that made me crack a smile. And the colors all seem brighter, and my soul is getting lighter. It just takes a There's no problem here to solve. It's natural. I'm feeling sad. That's all. It's natural. those little a cappella interludes that I mentioned earlier, and they're going to be bookending a song that I co-wrote with a wonderful Irish singer-songwriter called Jerry O'Byrne. And Jerry produced all three of my earlier albums. He produced my, my first album, When Two Lovers Meet, which is mostly traditional Irish material and one of my own songs. <clears throat> my second album, I Won't Go Home Till Morning, 
which is more American Appalachian folk music and two of my own songs. And the third album, The Plum Tree and the Rose, which is mostly my own songs, plus some medieval and uh, Elizabethan material. And Jerry did a beautiful job of producing all three of those. But after three albums together, we both felt that it was time for me to, to work with somebody different. And I'd been wanting for a long time to work with my cousin Adam. But I also wanted to have some continuity with what had gone before. And so I asked Jerry if he would co-write a song with me for the new album. And the only difficulty was that he was in Ireland and I was in England. So we had to co-write the song via email, sending uh, lyrics and MP3s back and forth. And we eventually had a song at the end of that process, and it's called Leave It For Another Day. But before I sing it, I'll sing this. The bramble does not seek to harm. It merely seeks to live. It injures without malice or intention. There's no question of forgiveness, no apology, no pardon. For minor wounds, too numerous to mention. Sweetness and pain, winter winds return again. Snow 
drops of blood like bright red flowers. This hurt will pass. Just let it go. Sweetness and pain. Shake it off and start again. here this evening. Thanks so much to, to Brenda for inviting us here and to Dana for making us all comfortable and introducing the show and to, to Gladstone who's there looking after the, the video um, and, and, and a lovely fellow called George as well who, who led us into the room and showed us how we could load in and everything like that. Everybody here at the library has been just lovely to us so you give them all and all of the, the friends of the library who make this series possible a great big hand please and great big special thanks from me to my wonderful long-suffering manager road manager driver suitcase carrier you're looking exhausted at the moment. No, I'm suffering. You're suffering. <laughs> oh, oh, right. You're 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 demonstrating. You're, you're giving the, the visual aid to the suffering thing. No, yes. I actually need the toilet. You need the toilet. Oh God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I better shut up. And then sing the last song. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> Martin Stansbury. He needs the toilet. The plug for him. <laughs> This is the last song, so, and I do have CDs with me. I've got my, do you want to run use the toilet while I tell them about the CDs? No? no? Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Um, I, yeah, the CDs, first two albums, When Two Lovers Meet, the most Irish one, and I Won't Go Home Till Morning, the mostly American one, were collectively released as a double disc package when I first toured over here in 2010. So the double CD is there, two complete albums in one. Third album, The Plum Tree and the Rose. New album, Walking Into White and the Mama album, Crow Coyote Buffalo, that I made with Zoe. And if you buy more than one album, you get a special discount, $5 off the total. So there you go, bargain to be had. And you're, oh, you're applauding. Nobody's, I don't think every, anybody's ever applauded for my special CD discount before, but thank you. Um, I take credit cards and checks as well as cash. I also have a guitar book that I wrote all about the tuning that I wrote, that I play in all the time, Dad, yeah, D-A-D, G-A-D. Uh, and the book mostly relates to traditional Irish music, which is what I was mostly playing when I when I wrote the book. But I am going to do a follow-up book that would be more um, about song accompaniment and about more genres and styles um, than just Irish music. So if you'd like to know when that's out and when I'm next in your area, you might like to sign my mailing list. And you can sign it with either your email address or your postal address, but please, please, please write legibly, if at all possible, in block capitals, because it's really frustrating when I send emails and they bounce back as undeliverable because I can't read the writing. So that's the extent of my commercial message to you. Thank you so much for coming out. It's been lovely to be here. I always like to record at least one cover song on all of my albums, so I did a Bobby Gentry cover album uh, on the second album, I did a, a John Martin cover on the third one, and for the new one I decided to cover this song. It was written by Ewan McCall for Peggy Seeger, and it's been recorded by lots and lots of people, not least Roberta Flack, and it's called The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face. First time ever I saw your face, I thought the sun rose in your eyes, and the moon and stars were the gift you gave. To the dark and the empty skies, my love. To the dark and the empty skies, my love. The first
first time ever I kissed a mouse. I felt the earth move in my hands like the trembling heart of a captive bird that was there at my command, my love, that was there. First time ever I lay with you and felt your heart so close to mine. I knew our joy would First time ever I saw your face, your face, your